welcome Fellowship Asheville. Uh, welcome to the Fellowship Asheville ConvoCast. Uh, we are in season three of the ConvoCast right now, where we are introducing you, the church, to people and ministries and organizations that we're a part of and that we support uh, so that you can get to know where your time, energy, uh, and donations are going. And today, I'm very excited to introduce you to Kipper Shower. Uh, you may recognize his voice. You may not know his face, but you might recognize his voice if you listen to the radio to Mix 96.5. Um, and he is our touch person and, and, and key person uh, leading an organization uh, called Christmas for Kids that he'll talk about here in just a minute. But until then, Kipper, introduce yourself to the folks. Well, hi, y'all. Hello, Fellowship Asheville. What a pleasure to make your acquaintance even uh in digital form, been a longtime fan of your congregation. Uh, my name is Kipper. I host the Morning Mix on Mix 96.5. I've had the pleasure of hosting a morning radio show here in Asheville for the golly, uh, four years coming up. I uh, just passed my four year anniversary. Congratulations. Um, thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have uh, been living here in Asheville for 12 years. I fell into the radio game five years ago when Mix literally called me up and asked me if I wanted to be on the radio. Uh, it was a childhood dream. And of course I said, yes. And then about four years ago, uh, my mentor departed for uh, Greenville and they asked me if I wanted to host the morning show. And I said, no, because I don't want to wake up that early. <laughs> what, uh, what time do you have to get up in the morning? I, uh, t my alarm is set for 3.30. Um, wow. and then, uh, there's, but to say that I get up at three 30 would not be the truth. <laughs> I, I start story gathering is what I call it at three 30. So that's basically me in bed going through my phone to figure out what I missed while I was asleep and start planning out what we're going to talk about on the show this morning. Uh, and you know, uh, I take a lot of screenshots, take a lot of notes, um, so that we're prepared to speak about. Well, the, the issues and fun little tidbits that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well, uh, so Kipper, what is something most folks don't know about you besides the fact that you wake up at 3.30? Oh my gosh. You know, I kept on going through lists and lists about this. Um, there's, I feel like I'm a very much an open book. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that the one thing that people don't know about me or that I get a chance to actually utilize often is that. I love the game backgammon. I'm a huge backgammon fan. And it's one of those things that, you, you know, you're not really walking through uh, downtown Asheville and seeing like a random backgammon board and you can pop into a game. But right. boy, if there is a chance to play it, uh, I can't say no. Okay, that is great. No one in, in all the convo casts that I've done has ever mentioned backgammon. So that's great. Yeah, I mean, I can talk about the fact that like uh, I'm a bad knitter. Uh, I like to knit for um, to to give myself a little bit of peace and calm. But uh -huh. uh, it's not one of the things because as soon as you say like well, I'm, a, I'm I knit, then people will actually want to see what you produce. But I think if I say I'm a bad knitter, then people okay. will be like, oh, just oh, okay, for him. he's just starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my wife is a great knitter. Uh, she 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 makes these cute little. Um, uh little animals with little dresses and i mean Aww. it's a whole like little argyle sweater she makes for them it's, it's she's got these little needles that she works with it's a it's incredible but she does it for the same reason just to to bring peace and calm oh. at the end of her day i mm, yes a woman after my own heart i completely understand it yeah yeah it would not bring me peace and calm i think i think it would bring me lots of frustration well you, you know you're you're here for christmas is for kids so tell us tell us about christmas is for kids Christmas is for kids is a very, very special campaign. Um, I think to speak about it would be best to begin with the history of it and yeah. then talk about the manner in which it has evolved. And it started here at Mix when the morning show was hosted by Tammy Jones and Ken Ulmner. And mm -hmm. they decided that they wanted to throw a party for kids and young folks that were in the foster care system here in Western North Carolina. My former co-host, Tammy Jones, is one of the most amazing people you will ever meet. And she was taken into the foster care system when she was about 10 years old uh, wow. and wow. 
was um and and was one of the people that really benefited benefited from it uh she unfortunately was born into a biological family that did not treat their children well and she was placed with an incredible family um just outside of charlotte and they embraced her with love they supported her and one of the most important parts of that relationship was that they listened to her and they saw her and that was the first time she had ever been listened mm -hmm. to and seen and we'll talk about that more um because tammy was such an advocate for kids in foster care it's rough it's it's not an easy place to be and they wanted to create something special uh just a moment that celebrated these kids and lifted them up and let them be kids uh, mm -hmm. rather than be young folks in need of help. So um, they mm -hmm. threw this massive party. There were inflatables. Santa Claus made an appearance. And that is when Christmas is for Kids started. And it started as this party. And then the question became, well, what more can we do? What, how, how else can we show these young people that they matter and that they're seen and bring joy into their lives? And the... Uh, the idea of creating a, a a gift drive along with this party um, came to fruition. And they worked with the different agencies to send out the counselors to work with uh, the young people in their charge to ask them what they wanted. And that is really where I feel the the real gift of Christmas is for kids is. Um, mm -hmm. Because one of the first engagements that Tammy Jones had with her, her um, foster mother was she was asked by her foster mother, what would you like to eat for breakfast? What do you typically eat for breakfast? And that was the first time that anyone had ever asked her, what do you want? Wow. Typically, she was just told, you know, or like, here it is. This is what it is. Um, to be asked is to be wow. seen. To be asked is to be loved to cater to that request is to return that love. Um, and that is where Christmas to kids, I feel defers from other gift drives, like your toy mm -hmm. for toys for tots or something of the sort. Um, because we work to ask these kids, not only what they want, but also make sure that they get it. Um, and we've been very fortunate in being able to work with these kids' wishes and be able to cater to them. And that's really where my heart goes out to it because these are not just wishes, they are representations of these people. They are reflections of who they are on, on a personal level and mm -hmm. what makes them happy. And the more hyper specific a wish is the more that i want it to be granted last year we had a young person ask for a three speed jimmy buffett pineapple beach cruiser 24 inch pink uh ladies bike which turned out to be completely discontinued uh, uh like from two years ago and but it was so hyper specific. You could tell mm -hmm. that this young person had seen this bike and that is all they wanted. And we made a mission to make it happen. And we started with eBay and they were going for upwards of $500. We expanded our search radius uh, and finally found someone in Durham, North Carolina that just happened to be selling one on Facebook Marketplace, still wrapped in plastic. And we... Wow. Then we had a, a mutual, I had a mutual acquaintance in um, Durham who was heading to Asheville. And I said, I'm going to send this person money. I need you to go pick up this bike. And they did. And that young person mm. got their exact wish. And that is, for me, one of the biggest parts about Christmas is for kids is not just saying, you know, here's a gift. It's saying, what do you want? And the more personal mm. it is, the more we try to make it happen. Yeah, I, I remember um, coming in 
uh, y'all had wanted to, because, you know, Fellowship Asheville, in case you don't know, we uh, we uh, uh, provide space for Christmases for kids for gift distribution and stuff like that. And we also uh, uh, promote it during our church services so that you can sponsor and, and buy a Christmas gift for uh, multiple of the kids on the on the list. Um, and uh it was our first year to do it, I think, and you had asked me to come in and be interviewed uh, for the morning show, just about our involvement and stuff. And can right we, before me, wait, wait, can we pause on that real quick? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. there was also, there was also a point. Okay, so Fellowship Asheville, y'all, one heck of a congregation. Okay, wow. so this was in 2019 when we had our largest gift list yet, and that was when we were still doing free gifts per kid. And all of a sudden, all of these names get taken off the list because Fellowship Asheville is going to take care of them, which becomes quite baffling because I'm like, well, do we know anyone from Fellowship Asheville? <laughs> are they are they real? Are they really going to take care of them? So we had to give you a call to be like, hey, do you know what you're signing up for? Right. Is this real? And because it was such a boon, it was such a blessing that mm. you all came in together as a congregation in such a major manner. It was it was bewildering and it was beautiful and it gave us a chance to meet each other. And yeah. my life has been um, forever changed and blessed by your presence. And the fact that fellowship Ashel came in, in such a major way in 2019 and has created such a space for us since then we needed space last yeah. year, especially during the pandemic. And you opened up your fellowship hall to us immediately it wasn't even a question it was like hey do you need help and the answer was yes we do we need a space mm -hmm. and fellowship pastor was there and um i i think that we have been just so greatly benefited by the compassion and care uh of your entire congregation it it um it means a lot so now well, you can talk about me pleasure. asking you a question <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my question was, uh, well, it, the question slash story. When I had come in to to interview on the radio station, and thank you for all that, by the way. It was, it's, it's, it's our pleasure to be a part of this, and so fun. And I don't know if you know, but when we took those names to the congregation, I believe, I think we had like forty names of kids. Yeah, and, yeah. and all, all those names and all those presents were taken in one Sunday of people saying, "Hey, I'll take care of this. I'll take care of this. I'll take care mm -hmm. of this," and it was beautiful. Um. But when I came in to interview, there was a uh, maybe he was a teenager, like upper upper teenager, or even in his young twenties, that talked about um, getting shoes. I have that conversation right here. I was actually uh, going to play. Unbelievable! Great, great, great! Because you? it 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 captured for me because what I love about about the this, the the story you told about Tammy uh, is mm -hmm. that. All of this happened with a very simple question. What do you want? Mm -hmm. um, the biggest change that I've seen happen is just by a very simple gift, a very simple gesture. And and I think for people, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the need. You know, when you think mm -hmm. of all the kids in foster care and, and providing presents for all the kids, in it feels overwhelming. But when you but when we focus on the fact that it is a simple question or a simple gift that can change somebody's life. Like that's the thing that 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 keeps us doing this and keeps this out here because because simple things aren't overwhelming, but yet simple things are the things that can change someone's life. So so you've got that story. I think that to to hear us talk about it is one thing, but to actually hear yeah. it from a person that received those gifts, and that is one of these things is that um, about this campaign is that we typically don't get a chance to actually interact with the people that are benefited by it but um through various channels we were connected with this young man this is yeah. um Gabe, who was um changed by uh, a, a pair of shoes that he received and uh, we had a chance to sit down with him and i still have this conversation it blew my mind man that somebody out there was like yeah let me try to help this kid who i've never met before who have no idea who he is no idea his backstory let me just give him something mm. it was really uh just mind changing experience i mean it makes you really rethink everything that you've learned throughout the years I mean, everything that you think about society and like people in general it just it changes your whole aspect whenever you can tell that somebody 
out there who really has no clue who you are is willing to do something nice for you. What did you think of society before that experience? Society kind of just looked at me and was like, I don't even want to be around you. Like my family, like they never were around. My mom never was around. Dad never around. So people just kind of like avoided me in situations. They kind of abandoned me in situations. So I really just did not like society. I didn't like anything that I was seeing. There was nothing going for me in life. There was nothing to where I seen myself being an adult and actually being successful in life. I just saw failure because that's all that was like brought to my attention at a very young age was just something that nobody's going to help you out. This is how life is. I hope you can understand it before you're an actual adult. Renee says you wouldn't fill out the wish list. Why not, Gabe? I thought it was just a gimmick. I really did. I thought that they were just putting false hope inside my mind that, yeah, maybe you'll get these things. Yeah, here, here you go, Timmy. You know, you can you could wish all you want to. And then God, she was actually the one who convinced me to actually do it. And uh, that day came and I seen that box and I went, what in the world? What is this? What's going on here? So you get the box. So you didn't yeah. want to fill out the Christmas wish list. No. <laughs> but you do. Yeah. It came around and I seen the box. There were two boxes with two pairs of shoes. Not even one pair of shoes, but two pairs of shoes. Oh, and it was such an experience to just have something new, have something that I've never really seen before. Everything has been hand-me-downs. Everything's been like just passed down. Like I never really got anything new. And then to see brand name, Adidas skate shoes. <laughs> so what would you want to say to whoever that was? Oh, dude, thank you so much. I mean, if if anything, if I could ever find out the person who gave me those shoes, I, dude, you would get the biggest hug of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I got to tell you, when we when I walked into the studio and I met Gabe, we kind of crossed paths on the way. Mm. And, and y'all sat down and y'all played that for me. And then you told me what happened. Like the three of us were just, I mean, tears just streaming down our face because of just the impact that a simple gift makes and that this person you know he requested these specific shoes like he like you said like specifically and, and the person who got them didn't just get him one pair but two pairs and just how that that extra generosity just i mean it literally if i remember correctly like it changed his view of humanity in that sense like like no longer was was life about failure it was about somebody sees me and um, you know, one of the questions I was going to ask you is what makes you light up in doing this? But I would imagine it's that. It is 100% that. It's knowing that there are more than 400 Gabes on mm -hmm. our Christmas list each year. There are, you know, so many young lives that we have the ability to change and to acknowledge and support in uh, a manner that is uncommon to them, but is necessary and valuable. And, and I carry Gabe in my heart, knowing yeah. that each of these young people are a Gabe, that we can yeah. make a difference. We can make a difference. Yeah. When, because uh, it, it's not all unicorns and rainbows. When mm -hmm. it's a bad day, when it's not going well, what gets you through? Man, um, it's not easy. It's it's not an easy undertaking, and it is. I want to say duty, but it's not duty out of a oh I have to do this sort of um, requirement as much as it is a duty to. Um, People that deserve it and need it the most. I'm sorry for them having a really no, tough time okay. right now. It's all right. It's all right. No, it's it's a it's a tough year already. Um, hmm. I don't have Tammy here, uh, yeah. and I'm I'm intimidated by it. Hmm. It and this is actually something that's just like been happening here. Like, yeah, it's one of those days where I am. I'm facing challenges, and it's like, yeah. wow, why? Why are you sticking through it? And it's because someone's got to do it. 
these kids deserve yeah. it. These young folks deserve it. And they also deserve what they want. And yeah. I'm very much uh, focused on making sure that it is handled with care and compassion. And that's, I think, the, the, the real duty of it is um, we as, as humans owe it to each other to do the best for one another. And if you have the ability to, that you should, and you should give it your all. Yeah. And so that's, that's what gets me going through it. And I get really yeah. serious. I don't know if you've seen, like, there's the difference between, like, hey, I'm hosting a morning show versus the um, I am, you know, running back and forth between different stages of where gifts are, making sure where things yeah. are. And yeah. I get really, yeah. really serious. Yes, you do. <laughs> you, you, you get in the zone. Um, but I don't, I, let, me, let me sit in this moment with you for a minute. Um, yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, uh, thank you for your, your vulnerability in that. Um, and I know one of the, the things that can rattle in our head and one of the lies that we can believe is that we're alone. And, and I want you to know you're not alone in this. Uh, you've got us here to support you yeah. and to help you in any way you need. And so don't hesitate to ask um, because we're here. And our answer is yes. Just to <laughs> clarify that. So, so, so whatever you need, we're here. All right. Cause I love you. I love what, what you're doing and, and anything we can do as a church to, to help. The answer is yes. Thank you, Fred. Truly. Yeah. Um, Fellowship of Asheville has been such a, such a source of support um, for these, for these years and uh, getting to know you and getting to know the other members of Fellowship Asheville is so um, inspiring and supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I never think for a moment that, that I'm in this alone. It's really just the, um, the days when things, when I, I feel we all have days when it's harder to keep your head high. It's harder yeah, to, sure. um, you know, put one foot in front of the other, but knowing that you have a reason and knowing that you have a team behind you at any time yeah. is, uh, keeps you going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're we're here for you, and 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 then back to you getting in the zone. Yes, I have yeah. seen you get in the zone here, y'all. Y'all, there is it, there is this grid on the floor. There is this system, and 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 Kipper runs. He is the captain of the ship, and and uh, it is it is a joy to just stand back and watch, uh, because you, you do you go from from happy morning show to like okay, we've got a job to do and a mission to accomplish. Let's do it. Well, it, it, it's luckily we've been able to really streamline and systemize a lot of this before mm -hmm. there was quite a bit of, um, I don't, I want, I don't want to call it chaos, but we've, you know, through trial and error have right. been able to really come together. And then also the, um, the, the gifts of the fact that my father is a systems engineer and was yeah. able to sort of create, um, an entire, uh, logistical platform for it based on a website that we, we we utilize heavily for this from intake to gift location to knowing exactly where we are and then we even get to print out a nice manifest a list to distribute to the agencies to let them know what what's actually coming their way yeah and that it, was it, by his involvement as well he he didn't understand how important this campaign was until he actually went out to sponsor a kid and went out to go get their gifts and then mm -hmm. realized it's not just a gift he he sponsored a um an eight year uh, eight month old boy uh and had to go out to you know the the baby section of the target and grabbed the the gift that he uh that had been asked for in his so uh, in his stead and then was also next to you know the little um, baby beanies and it's like oh it's cold out there his his head's gonna get cold he's gonna need these and then oh those are right next to the socks and, and it wasn't just a name or a gift on a list anymore it was a person that had needs and then from there it clicked and that's when he decided to design this whole interface that we utilize in order to actually 
maximize our time and make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Yeah, it's it's uh, the the evolution of it to go from a party to 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 to, to supporting and, and sponsoring kids for Christmas so that everybody has something specifically for them to to the mm. database. I mean, it has been this evolution of 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 the process. It's like I said, it's 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 really fun to watch. Well, I want to be uh, respectful of your time, and so if people want to help, I want to tell you on Fellowship Asheville's end, um, uh, you will begin to start hearing announcements about sponsoring kids. There'll be stuff in the in the sanctuary to do that. So just kind of keep your eyes on that. For people that aren't part of Fellowship Asheville that might be listening to this, if they want to help, how's the best way for them to do that? Well, um, currently we are gathering wishes from the different counselors, and they should be front-facing, which means that people will be able to have the ability to sign up to be a sponsor come November 15th, and that would be Perfect. done through MixChristmas.com. So just MixChristmas.com, and you should be able to see the uh, sponsor a child list and uh, having people pledge to take on a child's wish and uh, purchase it and then bring it to us either here at the radio station or at the two drop-off locations we have at Massage Envy North and Massage Envy, Envy South. Um, all that information is on, on the website, but mixchristmas.com would, the, the, would be the channel to proceed through. Great. Well, Tipper, thank you. It's always a joy. To, to catch up with you and to chat with you. Um, uh, Fellowship, I love you and I love being in the church with you. And if you're listening to this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel podcast. That way you get notifications uh, of when new content comes out. Uh, it's also good for us with something with algorithms I don't even begin to understand. But if you click like and subscribe, <laughs> it helps. So it's good for you, good for us. And um, uh, Kipper, I look forward to seeing you uh, later on, closer to Christmas as this gets going. I am so excited to spend time in fellowship Asheville. It, it feels um, strengthening just to be there. It feels wonderful to be surrounded by so much love. Um, it, it's it is, as much work as this is, it's also a joy. And I want to make sure that that is very much um, communicated absolutely, absolutely. that, yep. uh, that yep. I really do take a lot of joy in this whole process. And yeah. that is only yeah. uh, compounded by being able to do it with fellowship Asheville. Yeah, well, I think your joy and passion for this has been very clear. So, so, so you can check that box. Church, I love you, and I'll see you on the next time. Bye.